I've got an online church member asking me a question, you know, what are the horses? Many people think that the horses of the apocalypse represent the tribulation. I believe they represent the birth pangs. I believe they represent the pre-tribulation sign. So I've explained that many, many times in the 22 future events of Revelation. So let's just dive right into it. Uh, very quick answer. What could the white horse be? If we're already in the black horse, what could the white horse be? The white horse represents a deceiver, someone who is deceiving the world in the name of peace and got a Nobel Peace Prize. That seems to me to, to point to Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, the man who got a Nobel Peace Prize for nothing and dropped more bombs on the Middle East than even George W. Bush. Then the red horse is Syria. Remember Obama said the red line, I draw the red line on Syria. And God seems to draw a red line on Syria. The destruction of Damascus in Isaiah 17 matches the red horse of Revelation 6. After that comes the black horse, which is hyperinflation, scarcity. And then the green horse, which you can only get it in, you, you know it's green in Greek, because the word is chloros, and chloros is the root word for chlorophyll. It's the chemical that makes plants green. So there's no question chloros should have been translated green. But in your, in your Bible, it's probably, it's probably uh, pale or something like that. And that doesn't matter. It's fine. But what's interesting to me is, did you notice that during the coronavirus crisis, the drug that now everybody knows is hydroxychloroquine? And that's a compound from Chloroquine. Chloroquine sounds like Latin for green horse because chloros is green and equine is horse. Now, maybe that's not perfect etymology because drugs are just made up words, right? They're just made up words. And it's very hard to prove the etymology of a word, but God will use these play on words. He will use things that, are, that sound like this. This sounds like that. He did it to Jeremiah in chapter 1, verse 11. He asked Jeremiah, what do you see? Jeremiah said, I see a sekad. That's the Hebrew for almond tree. And then God says, very well, you, you've done very well because I will saked my word. I will watch over my word. Now, you totally would miss that in English, but it was a play on word between saked and sekad. One means almond, one means watch. But God says, it sounds similar, and I'm playing on the words. Well, chloroquine sounds a lot like green horse. So are we in the black horse stage of the seal, proceeding to the green horse? It looks like it's entirely possible. But it was a play on word between saked and sekad. One means almond, one means watch. But God says, it sounds similar, and I'm playing on the words. Well, chloroquine sounds a lot like green horse. Now that he is the false prophet of Revelation. And here's what has happened. His name is Jorge Mario Bergoglio. And he has been known as every pope who's filled the papal office. The title has been Vicar of Christ. Now that's significant to the papal office. Um, in the directory, he has just announced that he will no longer be referred to as the vicar of Christ, but he will be referred to by and in his own name, which is Jorge Mario Bergoglio. And this is huge. This is significant, brothers and sisters, John for those who five don't know. 43. This is so huge. I did this this is so significant. John 5:43. I just got to find the 43. I have come. Let's start with 41. I do not receive honor from men, but I know you that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, but you do not receive me. Now this is, so Jesus is saying, I've come in my Father's name to do the will of my Father. And they didn't receive him. And then he goes on to say, if another comes in his own name, you will receive him. Wow. 
so right here is a prophecy, and most people skip over that and don't know it. And when we do our Bible reading, I'm not giving commentary, but this is so significant what this pope has done. He's done a lot of things. This is the same pope that declared that Jesus sinned, that you don't even have to believe in Jesus to go to heaven, that Jesus was a failure at the cross. We should not be surprised. This is the same pope who is behind the Abrahamic International House of Faith being built on Sado Island in Abu Dhabi. This is the same pope who on the anniversary of Israel's um, May 14th becoming a nation wanted to um, do his ceremony in Israel and tie it to the Noahide laws, but he's pushed that back because of COVID-19. This is really, this is significant. Now, some scholars believe Oh, Jesus was returning, referring to false prophets that would come in their own name. But I've always believed, as many other scholars believe, that he was referring. This is a this is a prophecy of Antichrist who would come, and we know the false prophet is part of the Antichrist system. Brothers and sisters, I absolutely, 100% believe the false prophet is moving into place. Next up is the rapture sign, April 3rd, 2028. You can't miss this one. Extremely unique sign. Now it's important to remember that the Pleiades, the seven stars, Jesus called those seven stars the seven angels. The seven angels of the seven churches. Okay, so we know that the bright morning star is referred to as Jesus, is also referred to as Venus. And we know that Jesus refers to the Pleiades as the seven angels of the seven churches. So that is our sign for the churches in the heavens. Okay, the moon is for signs and seasons and it's pointing out, it's going to point this sign out. It comes across and it eclipses Venus and then you'll see it actually raises up and perfectly eclipses the center of the Pleiades. Okay, and then three days later after that, three days later, Venus, the bright morning star, comes by and eclipses. It starts the, the sign by eclipsing the lowest star perfectly of the Pleiades. Okay, so that's Jesus holding the seven stars in his right hand. Okay, so this is what is known as the rapture sign. So, from September 23rd, to April 3rd, 2028, we have a total of 3,845 days between the two signs. Well, you got to take that number and go look it up in, in Strong's Hebrew Concordance and uh, see what that might possibly mean. So here it is, 3,845 in Strong's Concordance. And uh, if you look at the usage, the last two parts of usage is depart or desert. And uh, that's quite fitting. Now we're going to look at something else to point at this is, that it, this is the rapture sign. And that is Psalms 90 verse 10. It shows here that a regular generation is 70 years, and that's what everybody's been going by. Except for one generation, it says. If by reason of strength they be 80 years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it's soon cut off, and we fly away. We fly away. There's only one thing in the Bible that has humans flying away. This is telling us, point blank, the rapture generation is not 70 years, it's 80 years. That's why the rapture didn't happen on Israel's 70th birthday. So we now know the rapture generation goes to 2028. The last day of the rapture generation is May 13th, 2028. 
Okay, because Israel was born on May 14th, 1948. Eight years later would be May 13th, 2028. And that happens to be 40 days and 40 nights after the rapture sign on April 3rd. Another sign that this is the correct reading of these signs. Another term that everyone is hearing about but may not be understanding fully is quarantine. Quarantine, it means enforced isolation. That's how we use it today. But actually it originated during the Black Death, the plague that killed one out of three Europeans. Can you imagine that? It is way more than what's happening right now. Even as bad as Italy is, it's not like the Black Death. During that time, they figured that um, they had to tell all ships to isolate passengers and crews for 30 days. They called it the Trentino. But after a while, they found out 30 days wasn't enough, and so they bumped it up after it didn't work. They bumped it up to 40 days, and that's why you get quarantine. Like French, quarant is 40. Quarantine means 40 days. And it's very interesting to me if you look in my book, The Divine Code, and you look up the number 40, you will see how 40 really relates to the quarantine. It is a time of testing and trial, and this number comes up again and again in the Bible. And I say this, 40 is the number of testing, trial, probation, or transition. On the year of the flood, God waited 40 days before telling Noah it is time, the time of judgment. Once the judgment was announced on the 10th day of the second month, Noah had seven days to load the ark and get to safety. Then it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses spent the first 40 years of his life in Egypt, the next 40 years of his life in the desert of Midian, and the last 40 years of his life leading the people of Israel to the promised land. Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days. The spies searched the promised land for 40 days. For their lack of faith, Israel wandered the desert for 40 years. There are 40 chapters in the book of Exodus. You see, so that number 40, quarantine, even that is prophetic. 40 days and 40 nights after the rapture sign on April 3rd. Then the end of the generation to the day. 40 days, 40 nights after the rapture sign is the end of the generation. From May 14th, 2028 to a total solar eclipse in Israel is three and a half years to the day. So from the start of the next generation, the tribulation generation, to this solar eclipse coming out of Libra, the justice scales, that is seen over Jerusalem, three and a half years to the day. Isn't that when the abomination that causes desolation takes place and for a solar eclipse to be coming out of the justice scales Libra on Jerusalem on that day can you imagine the abomination taking place as then the skies go dark what kind of an effect that is I mean the elect will be running for the mountains, as they're told in the Bible to do. Um, it will surely look like the end of times. Amazing, amazing poetry. Now we're going to take a look at seven years from the start of the tribulation generation to the millennial reign. Okay, so the seven year generation period ends, and then three days after the tribulation, we get a sign that signifies the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. It's right here. Aries, Venus and Jupiter, in that tight of a conjunction, is known as the Star of Bethlehem. Star of Bethlehem is in Aries. Aries is defined as the Lamb of the world. Can you think of a better sign for the start of the millennial reign than the Bethlehem star in the Lamb of the world? Again, another sign pointing to the accuracy of this timeline. 
Now looking at the overall timeline for the end times, the last generation. It starts with Israel becoming a nation. Shortly thereafter, you have a six-day war where Jerusalem falls into the hands of the Israelites as a unified city. Then you have the United States Supreme Court uh, making into law legalizing gay marriage. Um, shortly thereafter, we have the total solar eclipse that covers the entire United States from west to east. Then a few 40 days or 33 days later, you have the Revelation 12 sign. Um, many thought this was going to be the rapture sign, but it's just, it's a street sign letting us know something ahead, maybe reminding us of what's taking place. I'm not sure. But, nevertheless, shortly thereafter, we have the coronavirus popping up in between the two solar eclipses. Funny that in an eclipse, you only see the corona of the sun, and uh, the two eclipses bookends the coronavirus, which is right there. Then shortly thereafter, you're going to have the second solar eclipse crossing the United States in the opposite diagonal. This is the judgment of Babylon, I believe. Then the next up is the rapture sign, April 3rd, 2028. Uh, this sign is when the bright morning sun holds in its right hand the seven stars, which are known as the seven angels of the seven churches. It is the heavenly sign of the churches and Jesus meeting. And this can only take place if Venus happens to retrograde at the exact time, at the exact right time, because it takes over 500 years for Venus to climb up the ecliptic, but then it would still not hit the Pleiades unless it went into retrograde. So I don't have the stats on how rare or if this has ever happened before, but believe me, it's extremely rare if it did happen before. Then 40 days after the rapture sign, you have the end of the rapture generation. That is an 80-year period from Israel becoming a nation to 40 days after the rapture sign. Then on uh, April of 2029, you have Wormwood, which is a known asteroid coming inside of our satellites that close to Earth. It has a chance of hitting Earth. So we put that down. The next event on the calendar takes place three and a half years to the day after the start of the tribulation generation. Three and a half years after the generation starts and the abomination that causes desolation takes place in the city of Jerusalem and the skies will turn dark with this solar eclipse. It will look like the end of the world as the Jewish people panic and run towards the mountains as the Bible tells them to do. This is fire and brimstone stuff. Three and a half years after that, or should I say seven years after the start tribulation generation, you have Venus and Jupiter becoming into conjunction, just as they did to form the Star of Bethlehem. So we have the Star of Bethlehem forming in Aries, the constellation that means the Lamb of the World. I take this sign as being the sign of the millennial reign, considering it's seven years after the rapture generation, and the, the best star of Bethlehem in the Lamb of the World? I can't think of a better sign for that either. So that's as much data as I've got to this point. And uh, 
I hope you guys share this with your friends. Um, so far, everything's on track. So, keep looking up and may God bless you.